What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another Pitching Ninja's filthiest pitches of the day. Remember, before we get to those pitches, hit that subscribe button. Be a part of the biggest and best daily baseball show on YouTube. And now, without further ado, here are my filthiest pitches of the day. I'm going to start with Sandy Alcantara, who had 5Ks in 6 innings, giving up 2 earned runs. He had this 100-mile-an-hour heater, this 99-mile-an-hour two-seamer, and had this sick 93-mile-an-hour changeup that looked like prime Sandy Alcantara. And here's an overlay of his fastball and changeup, and you can see just what makes that changeup when it's on so effective. He faced Dean Kramer, who had 8Ks in 6 innings, giving up only one run, and had this fastball, changeups, and cutters, and picked up a sword on this changeup. And because both Kramer and Alcantara had over 5Ks, and this game hit the under, I won my same game parlay that I picked for MLB. Woohoo! Kenta Maeda had 6Ks in 3 innings, giving up 3 runs, thanks to these splitters and nasty sliders. He faced Ken Waldachuk, who had 5Ks in 3 and 2 thirds innings, gave up 3 runs, and had these nasty changeups. Brian Bayo had 5Ks in 6 innings, Give it up no walks and three runs and had this change up as well as this painted two-seamer. He faced Kyle Hendricks, who had five Ks in four and two-thirds innings, but gave up five runs. The professor did have this nasty change up as well as this painted sinker. Jose Barrios had four Ks in five and a third innings, giving up only one run and had this front door two-seamer, as well as this filthy breaking ball and change up. Aaron Savali had two Ks in five innings, giving up only two runs and had this curveball and sinker. Yu Darvish went six innings with nine Ks, nice, giving up only one run. His curveball looked as good as I've seen it. He picked up seven whiffs on this curveball at varied speeds with it, down to 71 miles an hour. That is a really pretty curveball. Opponents are only slugging 152 against Darvish's curveball this season with a 40% whiff rate. Darvish also had a couple dirty sliders, and here's an overlay of his fastball and slider, and you can see how these pitches tunnel but that slider drops under the fastball just as you're ready to swing. And then here's an overlay of Darvish's two-seamer and curveball. And you can see how that two-seamer runs back to the plate while that curveball goes the opposite way and dives. One of many reasons Darvish's curveball has been so effective. Darvish outdueled Christopher Sanchez, who had 5Ks in five innings, giving up three runs, and had this changeup. Julio Arias had 7Ks in 6 innings, giving up only one hit and no runs. He got a sword on his slurve, painted with his fastball, as well as had this nasty cutter. He outdueled Justin Verlander, who had 6Ks but gave up 6 walks and 3 runs in 5 innings. Ross Stripling had 6Ks in 4 and 2 thirds innings, giving up 2 runs and had this wicked slider as well as these change-ups. He battled Dick Mountain, who had 2Ks in 6 innings, giving up 3 earned runs and had this curveball. Luis Castillo had 5Ks in 5 innings, giving up 3 runs, and had this painted changeup as well as these sliders. He faced Eduardo Rodriguez, who had 7Ks in 5 innings, giving up 2 runs and 3 hits. He really relied on his mix of 2-seamers and 4-seamers and got this sword, and sprinkled in this changeup for the backwards K. Charlie F. and Morton had 4Ks in 7 scoreless innings, and of course had his high spin rate 3,000 RPM curveball. He outdueled Michael Kopech, who did an admirable job of holding the incredible Braves offense to under five runs before getting the first out in the first inning. If I had to face the Braves, I'd just ask him to skip my turn in the rotation. Shohei Otani had 7Ks in five innings, giving up four earned runs. He had these overpowering fastballs, this painted curveball, as well as these wicked sweepers. Here's an overlay of Otani's fastball and sweeper. And you can really see what makes that combo so tough. That fastball runs to the plate while that sweeper runs away just as you're ready to swing. My favorite moment from this game was this big pitch to Abreu. Literally everybody thought this pitch was a strike. And Abreu actually starts walking off. Well, I said everybody thought it was a strike other than home plate umpire Ron Culpa. After the inning, as Culpa is doing the foreign substance check on Otani, Otani asks, was it up? And Culpa says, yeah, it was up. And then says, that pitch? Oh, and it was in, too. And Otani plays along like, oh, both. Spoiler alert, it was neither. We really need a challenge system. And I just love Otani's mannerisms here. 
He knows with virtually 100% certainty that that pitch was a strike. And politely and almost mockingly goes, oh, both. But he's so nice about it, you could never eject Shohei Otani. And kudos to Ron Culpa for lying right to Otani's face. But then again, Culpa can do whatever he wants. Otani battled J.P. France, who had two Ks in four and a third innings and had this slider. Graham Ashcraft had two Ks in six innings, giving up only one run, and had this nasty slider. And he battled yesterday's filthiest starting pitcher of the day, Corbin Burns. Burns had an amazing 13 strikeouts in six scoreless innings, giving up only two hits. He painted with his cutters, got a sword on his slider, had these dirty change-ups, but Burns' best pitch were these filthy curveballs. He got nine whiffs on his curveball this game. And here's an overlay of Burns' cutter and curveball, and you can see why that curveball was so tough to hit. It comes in looking just like that cutter and disappears just as you're ready to swing at it. Burns also had this scary moment this game where he must have been a little dehydrated, but he's definitely lightheaded. But he ended up staying in and picking up a bunch more Ks after that, so he's totally okay. Now on to my filthiest relievers. Tuki Toussaint had this curveball and splitter. Justin Lawrence had these frisbee sweepers. Nate Pearson had these overpowering heaters. Jason Foley had this 98-mile-an-hour two-seamer. Yunir Cano had this dirty 96-mile-an-hour sinker. Araldus Chapman had this overpowering 102-mile-an-hour two-seamer. Look at that movement. Trevor Richards had these filthy change-ups. Felix Bautista had this 100-mile-an-hour heater and this 90-mile-an-hour splitter. Lucas Ersig picked up 4Ks thanks to his fastball change-ups and slider. Josh Hader had this sick change-up and this slider, and look how far in front this slider landed. And it still got the swing and miss from Castellanos. That swing was bad enough to make Castellanos' favorite superhero, Scooby-Doo, crack up laughing. <laughs> Ryan Presley caved the side with his fastball slider and this curveball that was nearly 3,200 RPMs. Tyler Rogers had this UFO slider. And my filthiest reliever yesterday was Devin Williams for these sick airbenders. A reminder, if you haven't already, make sure to check out my all-star interviews. And you can also learn the pitch grips of most of the all-star pitchers. Another feature you get by being subscribed to this channel, so make sure to subscribe. And now, my Pitching Ninja moment of zen. Check out the arm on this parade girl. An absolute bullseye. And I put a tail on it and gave you the StatCast metrics and I'll try to track down her water balloon grip for you. There were rumors that this was Mike Pence she hit. It was not. This is from a parade where people were encouraged to throw water balloons at everybody. No politician was hurt making this video. What is up, everybody? My picks of the day today are a three-leg parlay. I'm going to start with Tyler Glass now for over 7.5 Ks. Then I'm going to take Braxton Garrett for 5 Ks or more. Top it off with Kodai Senga for 7Ks or more. What would your picks of the day be?